Tenney of New York. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, obviously, Sunland just laying out there for us. We know there is a busy, uh, not just today, but next few days ahead of you here. In, in terms of this, uh, what would be the fifth short-term uh, spending bill here, where does this all end? I hope it ends with us uh, actually passing 12 appropriations bills in the Senate that we passed last September in the House and finalizing our budget, but I'm afraid we're going to probably be stuck with a continuing resolution that we will vote on tonight and we will wait for the Democratic minority to decide if they want to shut the government down again, to take money away from our community health centers, to give unpredictability to our troops, to deny our troops raises and all the things that they would be doing if they shut the government down. Uh, and I, I'm just really disappointed that they haven't learned from the last uh, shutdown that this is not going to be a good thing, not, not just for our citizens, but uh, you know, for the government's integrity. Obviously, you know, the pushback there is you're the party in power. Yeah, we're not, though, actually. Under the 60-vote rule, of course, we don't have the extra. The, we need Democrats to join along with us and, and vote and support those. Uh, when you say that, uh, yeah, I'd love to get rid of the 60-vote rule if we could and, and, and pass things on a simple majority so that we can continue to grow and, and take care of our military to secure this country. I had a very sobering uh, meeting recently uh, with the Republicans in our retreat with General Mattis and our Secretary of State Rex Tillerson about the importance of predictability and funding, especially for defense. My son is an active duty Marine officer who mm -hmm. has described to me how devastating this is for our military and how, how much it, it puts our security at risk. I wish Chuck Schumer would recognize that as a fellow New Yorker. Well, as, as, and as we look at what happens on funding, we know that this is obviously uh, intertwined when it comes to immigration. Now, I know you have gone on the record. Actually, it's green. not. There's really no well, in, immigration really has nothing to do with this. The DACA situation was, has been extended by the president. We don't have, an, we have until March 5th originally. The president said, we'll move on. And I thought was really incredible was the president offered the Democrats basically more than what they wanted. And Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin and I, I or Senator Feinstein have voted for everything that the president offered in his State of the Union uh, speech, which I find incredible. I, mean, I think the president's right. The Democrats really don't want a fix for this. They want to use it as a club to say that we're against immigration. I mean, I'm a very strong supporter of immigration. I worked with our refugees coming from war torn Bosnia as someone who spent a lot of time in the former Yugoslavia. Uh, this is just a mischaracterization, much like many of the things that go on in Washington. What about some of the efforts that we've seen, though? So yesterday we saw this bipartisan uh, proposal was going to be put forth by Senators McCain and Coons, and before it was even formally addressed, mm -hmm. the president shooting it down. Is there enough incentive on both sides here to come yeah. together and to have a meaningful discussion yeah. and to at least work with a proposal as opposed to shooting it down before it's right. even formally introduced? Well, you, what, you look at the legislation. It is The legislation is, I don't agree with what Senator McCain and Senator Coons support. I, thought it, I think it was terrible. I think what the president offered was actually a very, very big, a very generous. Uh, it was much more than was in the, secure, the uh, Good Life Bill, so-called uh, Secure America's Future Act. But uh, I think what the president offered was, was basically you know, amnesty after about 10 years to give security to our, our borders and to, get, and to stop the visa lottery system, to end chain migration. All those things have been supported by Chuck Schumer and many of the Democrats have not just supported, they voted for these things in the past. And you can just roll back on your old YouTube videos and find uh, me, you know, many examples of that and their voting records. So why are they suddenly now moving the, the, the football, like Lucy with the football in the old Peanuts cartoon? You know, I, I start to believe the president when he says they really don't care about solving this problem. We do. We want a predictable immigration system. We want to get it done. We're willing to make compromises. The fact that the president went from 690,000 so-called DACA recipients to extend that to 1.8 million, I thought was a very generous offer. I thought it was really reasonable. What Senator McCain offered is out of this world crazy. I don't, I don't support it. Uh, we have an issue that we have to deal with, and I think the president has made clear that that's what we're willing to do. And I think a lot of Republicans don't like what the president offered. I mean, my first blush at it at the State of the Union was, wow, this is really generous. And I was just shocked. I had Democrats sitting behind me that sat on their hands, not seeing what the president was trying to do. And I think it's unfortunate that they don't at least look into the, the many proposals that are on the table other than the McCain proposal. I want to I I pick up on something you just said because you brought up the State of the Union, uh, which the president brought up yesterday when he was in Ohio. And here's what he had to say about some of your fellow lawmakers on the other side. Even on positive news, really positive news like that, they were like death. 
and un-American. Un-American. Somebody said treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess why not? You know. Can we call that treason? Why not? I mean, they certainly didn't seem to love our country very much. Un-American treasonists don't love our country very much. Would you agree with that? I would say it was un-American, and they don't love our country. I don't know if I'd go as far as treasonous, but, you know, the president's before a large audience, and he likes to, to talk in colorful language. But I sat on the Democratic side, and I was, frankly, appalled at the behavior of the Democrats. I had, was inundated with text messages and emails from Democrats all across my district saying how ashamed they were of the Democratic Party, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, telling Democrats to sit down. The fact that they sat down when the president introduced a few couples where their children were killed by MS-13, a scourge that is hurting not only uh, other parts of the country, but in New York State, the place where I'm, I, I call home. So yeah, I thought it was terrible that they didn't clap for very American ideas. And why? Why not? Because they're just about resist. And what does resist mean? Obstruct. They're not interested so in, in dialogue. Past, they're Rutherford not interested in working with us and, and trying to come up with solutions. Let, let me just ask you, because on the other side, in years past, uh, there are always going to be times when the whoever the president is in power, the opposing party is not going to applaud everything uh, that the commander in chief says in that State of the right. Union address for obvious reasons. We heard Joe Wilson yell out, you lie. Uh, and yet those moments were not called un-American and saying people don't love their country. Is that dangerous yeah, rhetoric? No, I, I actually go think for you're characterizing that. Because you know what I did? I went back and looked at some of the State of Union addresses with President Obama, which, by the way, as a Republican, I do, was upset about many of the things he said as a small business owner, you know, his blame and divide and conquer strategy against Americans. You know, I felt like that when I was watching the State of the Union, but I watched those and people were standing for things that were American values, the flag, God, all those things that the Repo Democrats refused to stand for with President Trump. They didn't stand because it was President Trump. Um, I saw many more Republicans en masse standing up in, in President Obama's State of the Union addresses. And, and that's because he, when he mentioned something that was American and unity and something that we can all stand behind, freedom and those good things, he stood up for it. And I, I just found it was, I've never seen a State of the Union address quite like the one that we had last week. I mean, oh, it was so just I'm gonna appalling. Have to, I'm going to have to leave it there because we are out of Thank time. You so we much. appreciate you taking some time with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.